So Jeremiah 32, Jeremiah 32, and then also uh, we're going to be turning to uh, 1 Corinthians 10. A lot of you have heard about what happened with Travis Scott and the Astroworld, and uh, things have been uh, viral, actually. There's been a lot of viral uh, searches concerning about human sacrifices going on. So that's what some people have been claiming. It's been all over TikTok, actually. And then, so there are people who claim that the tragedy and the accident, that it could have been a human sacrifice done uh, because there were a lot of shady things going on. Now, what I'm going to do in this case is that I'm going to show you some passages in the Bible that can enlighten us about this event on what's going on. And at the same time, I'm also going to be covering some of these people, what they speculated about this. Now, I'm saying this very clearly so that there's no misunderstanding, is that I'm not going to give a 100% final conclusion that this was deliberately done where it was intentionally a satanic sacrifice. I'm not going to conclude it that way. Uh, the reason why is I want to give... To, uh, I want to give uh, more of a favoritism priority to the critics. That way, when I teach you from the Bible right here, it can become more convincing, all right? I'm going to give more weight to the critics right here. That way, when I teach you something from the Bible, uh, you won't think that it comes off of speculation, but that it'll cover all the bases and the critiques, okay? So I'm going to cover the speculative parts first, and then I'm going to cover the scripture and now I'm going to show you what the Bible does talk about in human sacrifice and what Astroworld has to do with that one. All right, I'm going to make it as clear as I can. Get ready. Here we go. First of all, let's cover the conjectures and cover the story of what, go, what went on. So what went on, in the, uh, as long as you heard about Travis Scott's concert at Astroworld, it had all kinds of satanic symbols. So it had a lot of symbols there that looked very, very satanic. And throughout this concert that appeared to be satanic, or to be fair to the critics, that appeared to the people uh, online that appeared to be satanic, participants in the concert, I'm talking about participants in the car concert right here, they were the ones who claimed that when they were in this concert, that it appeared satanic to them. These are people who experienced the concert. What happened over here is that there were a couple people who suddenly died, and there were heart conditions involved, and then all of a sudden there were people being stampeded, and then Travis Scott, while the, while the concert was going on, you have uh, people entering inside this statue of a head, kind of like Moloch when uh, they sacrifice the children, you ever watch the movie Metropolis, how they had that, for an example? And then an inverted cross with fire all around it, and then glowing hands and filled with eyes at the background. All right? I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, that's what happened in the concert. That's why you can't help but people thinking that this looked like hell, some people said. Especially when people started dying and stampeding, and there was so much violence all around. And Travis Scott, he didn't stop seeing. He kept going on because perhaps he was carrying on his artistic spirit. Let's just be, let's give him the benefit of the doubt. He's so involved and engrossed in that, that that's why he was so focused on it. Even when people try to come up on the platform of the concert and told him to stop and that there was something going on. So that's why you can't blame these people who were in that, who experienced that, that they're like, this looks satanic all over. This was like hell. This was awful. This was horrendous. So then, this is the story of what happened right here. Now, let me give some things of some satanic symbols. One is, if you actually look at one article here, by week, uh, they call it Weekly World Truths. The true dystopia is here. When the end arrives, it's really the beginning. So that's how they introduced uh, with Travis Scott. And then they gave a question on the headline front page. Who knows what lies beneath the surface? And then it's a picture of Travis Scott with his ears that look like a pointed ear like a demon. 
and then his face going like, like this, and then his face looks a little bit eerie or demonic. Okay, that's a good introduction to Travis Scott, right? So then the front, the front page looked demonic, all right? With these weird wordings right here, when the end arrives, it's really the beginning. Why would they word things that way? Then they also published, if you look at uh, Apple Music, their live streaming event, they have a, a picture that they show of Travis Scott in Houston, live at the mountain. And when they introduce this, November 5th, they have, it's weird, there are these eyes that are in that, uh, in that poster right there, introducing that concert, with two hands coming out, and you want to believe it, eyes in that hand. Now, this screams too much of what you've heard before about Illuminati and occultic stuff. So this is pretty plain right here. Even if, let's say, this is all artistic, you can't deny this, is that this is too much occult symbolism there. It's like me doing an artistic performance, but what if I use a swastika, right? But I don't mean anything from that. It doesn't change the fact that the symbol is pretty plain, right? And clear. So it doesn't change that, even if you want to uh, say that it was artistic intentions. That's my pointer. My pointer is, is not the intention of the artist that, yeah, I tried to kill all of you and do a human sacrifice. I'm not saying that. I'm saying because I'm trying to go by the critics. All right, let's do this one by one. I'm pointing out that what we see so far from the symbols, that is satanic. That's what we see so far. So then eyes all over and hand. And not only that in the concert, what, what happened is very weird. When that chaos started ensuing and people uh, were dying or stampeding, at the same time while he was singing his music, and to Christians it's satanic music actually. So think about this, to us Christians, to us Christians when we would see that, is that he got satanic music and then people are dying right here at the front and then all of a sudden hands come out like this above over here like that on the concert, the background, and it was going like this, as if it was receiving it. And then eyes popped out all over from the back screen at the same time looking down on those people. Now, if you were in there and you experienced that, you would freak out. You would think that would be demonic, right? Here's another thing. So it showed a fiery, hellish mountain in the background. So it's like a fiery, hellish mountain in the background. And then at the same time, it showed a big, huge thing like a portal opening up. Okay? So it's not this uh, head or face. Okay? This was like uh, at probably at the front gate or some, something or one of the entrances. The, uh, in the concert platform, though, it was an inverted cross, and then it was like a portal or something spiral with that fiery mountain in the background. Now, that's pretty uh, strange. And then not only that, it seemed like a portal, but what seemed even more so is because a sign popped out in that portal that says, See ya on the other side. You, that's why there's this viral thing going around if you were in there and the people are saying, this was all planned like a, this was a human sacrifice. Now, I'm not going to go that far, okay, because I'm trying to stick to the critics right here. Let's say this is all artistic depiction. But it doesn't change the fact. You see way too many symbol, symbols here that's, that's undoubtedly to Christians. To Christians, it's satanic. All right, see you on the other side. But not only that, Travis Scott, he wore a t-shirt when he was doing that performance of uh, people who go inside this door and then they come out differently when they come out the other side of the door. He was wearing a t-shirt like that. It was like blue, I think some like blue people in this side of the door and then once it goes in, what comes out is red people. I don't know what that meant. You could probably guess, all right? Was it maybe people who died and then they went to hell, something on the other side? 
I'll just say I don't know. I'll just call it conjecture, speculation. But it's definitely weird stuff. He was wearing portal stuff. And not only that, it was like an inverted cross that led to a portal. Now, you know who makes a big deal about backward crosses? Satanists, a cult. So there's too much uh, weird satanic stuff. So inverted cross, right? Then you got a fiery mountain in the background with a portal, all right? With a concert going on in front of this portal with a fiery mountain, right? Now, you want me to tell you something which is very, very weird? If you heard about, uh, this is found in Swiss, uh, BBC News, Switzerland Tunnel, the oddest moments of the opening ceremony. If you look at that ceremony, which I don't know if you've heard about it before, they call it the Gothard Tunnel. The Gothard Tunnel, they held a concert, a performance too. And believe it or not, uh, in this Gothard Tunnel, they held a ceremony where there was this Baphomet creature goat coming out. And then people like they were coming out of a portal, which was kind of weird. And then people uh, and demons dancing and people having sex. That was really messed up. That was really dark demonic stuff. So then and this was something in, even the uh, news media said this is very weird performance. But when they did that as a celebration, the news media said, but apparently some people were deeply interested. You know who they were? Rich elites video cameraing the whole thing. I wonder why. Were they rejoicing about something? Was it a ritual for some celebration that they were doing? It makes you wonder. You might say, why is that? The, the reason why this is important in Switzerland is because less than 100 miles away, they are working on something where they call it a portal. And some people mention about working in the tunnel or trying to delve into something with physics. And they dealt with something that was weird in a spiritual plane. And they use spiritual language. CERN. CERN. There were concerns about some people that claimed that CERN was opening a portal to hell. And I'm not going to say that they were. But you know what's very uncanny is that it was also where they built this was on a mountain too. And some people showed this mountain shape in the Astro World concert with the portal match with the same thing with their portal or tunnel on a mountain at Switzerland. That was weird, all right? That was like weird. So I'm like, ooh, all right. That was weird. So I, there's too many, uh, what we see right here, there's too much satanic symbolism, right? So there's a concert going on, see that right here? In a, something where it's like a fiery mountain on a portal. Now we'll come to that later, okay? Just keep that in mind. So far we see right here this symbolism. I'm saying symbolism here. All right, that's satanic. Why is that satanic? I'm going to show you through scripture and prophetic later on. All right, now, another thing is that uh, there's a lot of satanic symbolism, which is very, very strange. But what happened was originally the security guard officer claimed that uh, he felt a prick in his neck like someone put a needle on him. So then he failed to do his job, so then he failed to protect the people. So it seemed like there was somebody who went around the crowd who probably instigated a plot to kill people. So that's why there were several people that died. Now, it turned out that the security officer, he recanted after that. He retracted his statement. So I don't know what really happened, but there's no doubt something funny went on. Something funny went on, especially people who died in that concert and then... Uh, there, were, uh, there are TikTok videos. You can look it up. Uh, just type down crowd chanting, stop the show at Travis Scott's concert at Astroworld. Just search that one, and then you'll see TikTok videos of that one. And they were crying out to stop the show. Here's one from 
N-U-K Santiago. Uh, when he posted on Instagram, he said this. This is a guy who, who is not against Travis Scott. This is a guy who treasured Travis Scott and prized him and admired him in rapping. But you know what happened? After that concert, I don't know if it was the Holy Spirit convicting him or something, but he ran away and he said, you know what, I love Travis Scott. I admired his concert. I did rapping. But after what happened in this show, uh, it's, I've done rapping. I've done like really uh, uh, like heavy rapping. But this kind of rapping concert, this was satanic, demonic. He said that. Like it was like hell. And I think that maybe he was under conviction from the Lord after that. So he ran away after that because it was so scary, he said. So this is from a, a rapper himself who was an admirer of Travis Scott. So he even confessed that. So we see a lot of uh, occult symbolism right here. There's a lot of occult symbolism or satanic symbolism. At least that much we'll have to admit. At least that much we can admit. Now I'm going to uh, show you something interesting. What does this have to do with historically speaking? I'm going to go through historical evidence right here to look at all of this, okay? Historically, what's the evidence for this one? And then biblically, what's the evidence for this one, which, is, which trumps everything? And then prophetically, what's the evidence for that one? And then you might have different thoughts. All right, so let's cover this one. Oh, there's also one suspicion that people had, which was very, very weird, is that they said that Travis Scott that he's related, connected to the Kardashians. So then there are, if you've heard about uh, those rumors, uh, let's call it rumors for now, about the Kardashian family and some weird stuff that looked like that was occultic going on, then it was kind of strange that when he got involved, he went darker and darker as you noticed his career. That's what you're gonna notice with Travis Scott's career, that timeline of his. Things got a little bit darker once he got involved with the Kardashians. Hmm. But I'll tell you this much is that so far we see satanic symbolism. There's no doubt about that. Uncanny similarity going on in Switzerland for some weird reason with their occultic ritual. All right. And maybe it wasn't a deliberate occultic ritual, but it was a rich, uh, it was a performance nevertheless that very, that very much looked occultic. Now, historically, What's all this? All right, so in Astro World, it had a picture. Uh, they had this face, okay? I, you can look that up. Astro World and Travis Scott, you're going to see a picture of his face over there with a mouth opening up, like a big, huge statue of that, and people entering inside that mouth. Now, I don't know if you knew this, but in the movie Metropolis, it pictured Moloch, false god, and they put a head like that with the mouth open that matched Travis Scott's Astro World stuff. And then they were like, uh, it showed Moloch. And then you know what the Bible says about Moloch, human sacrifice. But if you look at other pagan stuff too about human sacrifice, it's not new. Historically speaking, there was this head that opened up its mouth that represented a false god. And there was human sacrifice involved. So the historical evidence is that people have been doing that. Human sacrifice to worship their pagan god. Astral world, for some weird reason, why did they follow that kind of historical pattern? <laughs> Pretty weird, right? With people dying and then a statue of a face that, uh, similar to Moloch. Why, why, would it do, why would it do that? Maybe I'm stretching, right? Maybe I'm stretching. Let's say it's a stretch. But the point is this. The point is, is that historically, when you look at throughout history, there was always music involved. Satanic music involved. Where they did human sacrifices in front of Moloch or false gods. All right. That's the tie right here. And it all has to do with uh, worship, uh, worship of false god, Satan worship. Now, there is no doubt throughout history that is very evident. Very evident throughout history. This has happened throughout the past. 
Uh, even movies would depict that when people are offered as human sacrifice, they play satanic music. They do that satanic drum, all right? I'll get to that one, which is going to be an interesting time. They did a satanic drum, and then they did a human sacrifice with fire coming out in front of a false god idol. That is historically proven. Uh, we're going to look at Jeremiah, all right? Your hand's over there, right? So Jeremiah chapter 32. Notice what God, God said about this. Jeremiah chapter 32, and then it never came to his mind, he said. He was very careful to note that. Verse 35, the Bible reads, but, And they built the high places of Baal, well, kind of like a mountain, which are in the valley of the son of Hinnom, to cause their sons and their daughters, see children, to pass through the fire unto Moloch, which I commanded them not, neither came it into my mind. So that's something that Satan has always done. All right, there's no doubt about it. Now, uh, if that's always what Satan has always done, if you're a Christian, what, uh, let's forget uh, satanic deliberate human sacrifice that was going on from Travis Scott's intentions. Forget that one. Yeah. To a Christian believer, when you look at all of this happening, and then uh, what kind of spirit was behind that? That's how Christians see it, right? Christians don't go by, you know, malice and intent in court to prove a criminal case. That's not what we're talking about right here. Christians look things through a spiritual plane. Spiritually speaking, what was behind all of this that happened? Satan. That's Satan. If you're a Christian and if you know your Bible about this fire and then this head that looks like Moloch, eyes and hand coming out, inverted cross and fire... That's a satanic spirit. If that satanic spirit, if we agree, was there at that time, what was Satan having in his mind then when his spirit was working like that? What was Satan having in his mind when he did all of that? Unless you look back in the past, what he did before wow. with Moloch, human sacrifice. So see, we're not saying right here that, uh, I'm not even saying, I'm trying to give so much benefit of the doubt. I'm not saying that, uh, I, uh, I'm not saying Travis Scott did this intentionally, deliberately, but here's the thing. Even by accidentally, unintentionally, with even sincere good intentions he might have or the concert might have, Christians know this from the Bible. Despite of sincere, honest intentions, Satan's spirit can work behind it and work some greater tragedy, greater purpose that Travis Scott and other people had no idea about. All right, but let, we establish that much now. We establish that much that this is satanic then. There's no doubt about it. This is satanic, and it matches with what Satan did in the past with Moloch. All right, we establish that much, but uh, let's uh, go one by one. In s all pagan sacrifices, similar. You can't deny history. It's the same thing, coinky-dinky, with what happened at Astro World. It all matched up. And then what? If Satan's spirit was behind that astral world on what happened, then guess what? He's following that similar pattern that he did back in history. It doesn't change that. So you have historical evidence. Why? It shows a, this is basic psychology. It shows a behavior pattern of the person. It shows a behavior pattern of your enemy, Satan, how he does things. Now, establishing historical argument, now let's look at the biblical argument here. Look at 1 Corinthians 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Now let's establish this biblically. We're going to give biblical evidence now. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. One, I establish the historical evidence, and I'm, not, uh, and I'm looking at it through a spiritual plane, okay? So remember, this is all through a spiritual context, not a naturalist context. Do you understand that? That's why the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. All the news media, all these people, uh, the sciences, and etc. It's a natural perspective, natural viewpoint. That's why there's a thing called naturalism. We're not using that perspective. If I go by that perspective, I can't point out something spiritual here. Spiritual, spiritual plane, natural plane, has to be opposite. 
So I'm proving all of this in a spiritual plane. Okay? Now, through a spiritual plane, from what Christians observe things, from a Christian perspective, now let's look at 1 Corinthians 10 now, all right? We do know, we can agree so far now, that historical evidence from a spiritual plane, as an honest, sincere Christian, there was a satanic spirit behind it. And Satan was following a similar behavior pattern that he did in the past with human sacrifice, Moloch, worship service, with dark music. Now, what's the biblical evidence? The biblical evidence is 1 Corinthians 10. Now, the Bible says that, verse 1, uh, Moses and the children of Israel passed through the sea, right? All right, verse 3, they ate spiritual meat, Paul called it. He called it spiritual, not physical meat. Why? We do know that the quail that God gave to the children of Israel, that's physical meat. But Paul called it spiritual. Now look at verse 4. And all did, uh, did all drink the same spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. What's going on right here? The children of Israel, they drank water out of a rock, right? Well, that literally physically happened, but Paul called it spiritual. Now look at verse uh, 5 and 6. Children of Israel, they were killed in the wilderness, right? Verse 6, Paul called this our examples. What? That we should learn at verse 6, right? Isn't that right? Verse 7, we should learn from that as well about their music that the children of Israel did. That was satanic. Paul says you have to learn from that. Verse 8, people who died. Verse 9, were destroyed. Verse 10, destroyed of the what? Destroyer. Huh, so people dying. God says you want to learn, uh, God says that you have to learn from that too. Verse uh, 11, all these happened, happened unto them for in samples. They are written for our admonition. That's something for us to learn. But look what Paul says. This is so interesting. For our admonition upon whom the what? Ends of the world are come. You know what Paul said? All this that happened to the children of Israel, you're supposed to learn because it's going to be applied also to future end times. Okay, so if we're going to talk about future end times so what the Antichrist would do, uh, and I haven't hit prophetic yet. I'm only on biblical, all right? I've, I've given prophetic glimpses, but I haven't gotten there yet. I'm only establishing biblical. Biblically speaking, God says, if you're going to understand about end times events, also, he said that you're supposed to learn from the children of Israel. But when he gave the story of these events, okay, listen up now. When he talks about events here, about the children of Israel, God says you're supposed to learn from that, right? All right. Now, from these events, what does God do? He doesn't put a physical or something literal in there. You know what he puts it as? He puts it as symbolic. He puts it as figurative. He puts it, most importantly, as spiritual. Okay, what's my point here? The point is, can we agree so far from 1 Corinthians 10 that these events that happened to the Jews, events, actual situations that happened, actual tragic events, let me put that one, that'll become more clear. Tragic events, that they are something that are supposed to symbolize and, spiritual, and show you a spiritual meaning of what's going to happen. Can we agree with that? Yes. That's what 1 Corinthians 10 told you. Can we agree even further that tragic events in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, God uses tragic events so that we can learn the symbolism and the spiritual meaning behind it for the tribulation. Yes, because 1 Corinthians 10 verse 11, right? Okay, if tragic events is supposed to uh, show something symbolic, and spiritual, and also it's applied, it can be applied for end times. 
let me ask you this question then. Then do you doubt that the Lord can use tragic events? Because that's his character. He does that. That God can use tragic events to show you a spiritual meaning and something symbolic that's going on that can be applied for tribulation. All right, let's put an example of such a tragic event. Then do you doubt that God can use a tragic event like Astral World to show you the spiritual meaning and the symbol, uh, symbolic meaning behind of what's going on that will happen for end times? Yes, because 1 Corinthians 10, that's God's character. And that's biblical evidence. There are too many events in the Bible that God uses as a spiritual uh, figurative meaning of what's going to happen in the future. You want an example? Abraham and Isaac. And Jesus called that, that event, he put it on a, he showed you a spiritual meaning, a symbolic picture of what's going to happen in the future. He said, you know, Abraham saw my day. And it's to picture my sacrifice. Paul, he mentioned the event and the incident of Hagar, uh, Hagar and Ishmael being cast out, that tragic event. It's supposed to what? Pick, it's the spiritual meaning and the picture behind it was to show what's going to happen in the future, right? What? That Christians are not bound to the law, but we're free under Jesus Christ. See, there's no doubt about that. God uses events. There, that's biblical evidence. You cannot deny biblical evidence. Biblical evidence is God's tendency is to use events, even tragic events, to show a spiritual picture of what's going to happen in the future. All right, if, we, if that's biblical evidence now, then do we see that case with astral world? Absolutely. Look at Exodus. Let's look at uh, Satan's tendency behind it, all right? Now, let me add this further, okay? This is even more eye-opening, all right? Look at the book of Exodus, chapter 32, chapter 32. Let me uh, get you something eye-opening right here. If God uses events to picture something of what he will do in the future, do you honestly believe Satan's not going to do that too? Have you ever studied symbols or uh, occultic people who talked about symbols? You know what they said about it? They said that symbols, what they're supposed to do is hide from the public knowledge and it's supposed to mean something of what their intention or what they will do. That's something satanic. So that is Satan's tendency. Uh, look at Exodus chapter 32. Okay, so how do we observe from this? Simple. Look at the symbols then, all right? There is music, and there is people dying, and then there's uh, what we insist Satan worship. Now, how can we say that about astral world now, right? How can we honestly say that? Well, it does show a lot of those pictures. The spirit behind it shows you of what Satan's going to do in the future. That's what Astro World, the tragic event, is showing. Let me show you. All right. First of all, Exodus chapter 32. Notice in verse 6, the children of Israel. And they rose up early on the morrow and offered burnt offerings and brought peace offerings. See, sacrifices, right? All right, there's sacrifice, okay? And the people sat down to eat and to drink and rose up to what? Play. Play. They, were, they were doing ungodly music. Not godly music. They did ungodly music. And what did they do? They did idol worship. If you look at uh, verse 4, what were they doing? And he received them at their hand and fashioned it with a graving tool after he had made it a molten cap. And they said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. Huh. Okay. So Satan did that before. All right. He done music with... Uh, Satanic worship. Let's look at Daniel 3. Daniel 3. Okay, do you see the spiritual plane behind this so far? Yeah, we can agree the spiritual plane behind it so far is satanic. That's pretty easy, easy to see. Now, Daniel chapter 3. 
Daniel chapter 3. Notice at verse 4, verse 4. The king wants them to worship a false idol, a golden image. And then he has uh, ungodly music playing at the background. Verse 4. Then an herald cried aloud to you, it is commanded, O people, nations, and languages, that what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, dulcimer, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king has set up. And whoso falleth not down and worshipeth, shall the same hour be cast into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. Satan did that before. Satan did that before. That's a strange tendency right there. Children, uh, Jeremiah 32 is another, uh, Jeremiah is another example we looked at, right? Offering the sacrifice in the fires of Moloch. But historical evidence is also with that too. There's always satanic music playing. That's the bottom line. There's always satanic music playing while there's human sacrifice. Now, Let's uh, look at uh, the book of Revelation 13. Here's my pointer here. Revelation 13. Satan has done that before. Can we agree with that? All right. This is Satan's tendency. He always played music, and there was always Satan worship involved. Okay? That's Satan's tendency. We can agree with that so far. Sacrifice, yes, there is historical evidence of that one. All right, there's too many historical evidences of that one. Jeremiah is another biblical case of that one too. Now, Revelation 13, what's my point here? This will, th these tragic events all picture something. What? What, the, uh, what Satan's tendency, behavior, or pattern will be. In the future tribulation, my point is he's going to do that same thing. He's going to have music playing in the background, satanic music playing in the background with all of them worshiping the devil and he's going to have human sacrifices laid out in front of him in the tribulation. You don't believe me? Well, let's start off case by case, all right? Revelation 13, verse 15. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, so there's idol worship, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many would not worship the image of the beast should be what? killed so there are people killed if you don't worship uh, the image idolatry so we understand in the tribulation they're going to worship satan he's going to have that idol that image set up now uh, how do i see right here that satan's going to play his music in the background and how do i see right here that there's going to be human sacrifices involved in this one all right let's do one by one one is this the previous biblical evidence show he did that before that's why. When there's uh, idolatry, he always has his satanic music play with uh, human sacrifice as well. That's biblically seen. Uh, second case is this. A second case, which is eye-opening, is look at uh, Revelation 5 and Revelation 14. This one will be eye-opening. Look at Revelation 5 and Revelation 14. Okay. Now let me show you some interesting pointers that you never thought about before. Didn't you know uh, the source of Astro World's music, all right, Travis Scott's music, rap, contemporary music, that all of that comes from witchcraft? You didn't know that? It comes from voodoo. You didn't know that, right? It comes from voodoo originally. So you already see Satan from music already. Because of voodoo, okay? Now, uh, am I stretching this? No, let's look at uh, one, of, uh, one of the famous musicians who's a drummer, all right? Uh, Mickey Hart, if I recall. The, uh, drummer for the Grateful Dead. This is what he said when he started to study all the different cultures and then start to delve into music, especially the drum beat. The key about rap and contemporary music is that backbeat. All right, they, they all share that agreement. Jazz was the mother and birth of all of that. So all that comes from there. It's that beat. That's why in um, those satanic sacrifices, they have to have a what? That's weird, isn't it? 
Now, I'm not saying all drums are bad, like the marching drums, like you can use that to glorify the Lord, but that specific beat pattern, you have to understand, that backbeat pattern, that originated from those kind of pagan rituals and sacrifices. It's called backbeat. So this is what he said. When slave ships began plying the waters between the New World and West Africa, everyone thought they were just carrying strong, expendable bodies. But they were also carrying the counterplayer culture, maybe even the mother goddess culture, preserved in the form of drum rhythms that could call down the Orisha, that's a false god, from their time to ours. So you can transport like a portal, so to speak, from a spiritual plane into a physical plane through music. That's what these drummers believed in. That's why they had their human sacrifices and play that music. Why? They're trying to get to, close to that spirit. Oh, by the way, the date of that Astro World concert, coincidentally, is only a few days after Samhain. Which is what? Samhain is that uh, where they believed it was a time period or the season where the physical plane interacts with the spiritual plane. Okay, is that more eye-opening to you? But let's keep reading. In the Caribbean and South America, because you know that's uh, where voodoo is rampant, slaves were allowed to keep their drums and thus preserve their vital connection with the Orisha, though the sudden mingling produced new variations like candomblé, santeria, and vodun. And out of this severing came the first beat, backbeat pattern, the mother, Jazz. Then he evolves. The blue. The backbeat. Rhythm and blues. Rock and roll. Some of the most powerful rhythms on the planet. Okay, there's no doubt. This is satanic music then. And that has a historical evidence of what? That was connected to back then where they did those pagan rituals, including human sacrifice, to enter that spiritual plane. Okay, but we got the music part. But uh, let me show you something about voodoo, all right? Is there a human sacrifice in voodoo? Oh, that's just an urban legend and back then. And as much as they want to say this, Los Angeles Times, title of their article, Human Sacrifice in Voodoo Rites Alleged. Here's another article. The Washington Post. I'm reading from a liberal news source. Title of their article. Deaths of three may be tied to voodoo. Here's another one. This is the Smithsonian Magazine from uh, Voodoo's History back then. Title of their article, The Trial That Gave uh, Voodoo a Bad Name. What was that trial? What happened was there were some humans being sacrificed or maybe even eaten. Why? Because they wanted some magic or blessing out of that from Voodoo. So, human sacrifice, is that connected to Voodoo? All right. Music, is that connected to voodoo? Yes. How about that? As much as I've read the, some of the liberals or the historians that try to say voodoo is a harmless religion, yeah, they've done that with Islam and a lot of other religions too, all right? But when you look at the adherents and the followers of it, no, they knew what it was. Okay. So, if we see that, this should very much disturb us then. Look at Revelation 14. This is interesting, okay? If you don't worship the beast, then you worship God, right? But when you worship God, notice what's involved at Revelation chapter 14, verse 2. And I heard a voice from heaven as the voice of many waters and as the voice of a great thunder. And I heard the voice of what? Harpers, Harpers harping with their harps. And they sung as it were a new song before the throne... And before the four beasts and the elders, and no man can learn that song but the 144,000. So notice that they were uh, singing songs while worshiping the Lord, right? Do we see that? Huh. Look at Revelation 5. Revelation 5. Let me show you something else. This is going to be eye-opening. Watch this, okay? Watch this. Revelation 5. Verse... Nine, and they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation, and hast made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. 
Okay, can you agree that we as Christians, when we worship God, that we're going to be singing when we worship God? Now look at this. We worship God with music. And by the way, there's a sacrifice. Look at verse uh, 8. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and four and twenty elders fell down before the lamb, every, having every one of them harps and golden what? Vials full of odors, which are the prayers of saints. Huh. God has that. Who knew about that? Who knew about that? They majored in music and they knew this when they were worshiping God. Look at uh, uh, verse 8. And when he had taken the book, the who? Four who? Four beasts. Do you know who those four beasts are? They are cherubims, right? Yeah. They're cherubims, right? Okay, some of you are already connecting the dots. You already got the answer. All right, but let me go one by one in case this is too fast for some people. All right. Cherubims is verse 8. What did they do at verse 9? They worshipped God with the sacrifice while singing music. Who did that originally a long time ago? Ah! Think about it. He was doing that back then. But then what happened? Isaiah 14. He wanted to be God. Now, are you telling me that when God, when Satan's been doing that to God, he, he's saying, no, I want that for me. That should be evidence. I'm, you sh that should convince you that, yeah, Satan, when he does something at the tribulation, he is going to do that. That's what he wants. What he wants is what I used to do back to God up in heaven. I want that in my time. Is there human sacrifice involved with this? Yes, look at uh, Revelation 6, verse 9. Revelation 6, verse 9. <clears throat> Notice right here that in God's holy temple... In Israel, here they're worshiping, right? That's supposed to be worshiping God, but Satan takes it over. But in that place, what happens? Human sacrifice, verse 9. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? Look at that, when... Satan receives his worship, and we know his pattern. He, he's going to have music, and he's going to have idolatry, so that's Satan worship. But at the same time, that verse shows there's human sacrifice. Human sacrifice. So then, if Satan's spirit was behind astral world, what would he like to do? He would love to see humans dying when his worship music is being played. See that? You have to look at a spiritual... These are pe if, you, if you don't look at a spiritual context and a scriptural context, you're not going to see that. But if you are so aware of the spiritual world through the Word of God, this becomes very evidential to you that this is satanic. What this tragic event happened, whether intentional or unintentional, done out of sincerity or malice, there is no doubt Satan was behind all of that. And he's trying to... What is he trying to do? He's trying to show what he's going to do in the future. All right, but uh, this becomes even more eye-opening because uh, this is very disturbing. When you look at gematria, it's what it is. It's originally an occult practice, okay? An occult practice in which the numerical values of letters, words, and phrases are calculated and those values are used to uncover hidden significances in words, names, or texts. Okay, then this is something that Satan will do then, right? Can we agree with that? Yeah, this is something Satan will love to do. So then, in other words, he will have a hidden meaning behind numbers, right? All right, if you don't believe in that, then you don't believe. So Satan, he can be behind tragic events to foreshadow something. We agreed with that much. How about numbers? Will he do that too? Of course, because Gematria had already admit that. That's a cult practice. Satan's spirit's behind it. But more so with Revelation 13. You don't think Satan makes a big deal about numbers? Sure he does. Revelation 13, verse 18. Numbers are important to Satan. 
right? 666. Numbers are important to Satan, you have to understand. Look, it's the same thing. Satan always imitates God. God makes a big deal about numbers. We've seen that. God makes a big deal about events. They foreshadow. They show a spiritual meaning behind it. They foretell what's going to happen. Satan plays along. Nothing changes. So then what would Satan do out of this? It disturbed me what I found out. Okay. You know what was behind this? Astro World. You know why Travis Scott did that? It was in commemoration of something. Back then when Astro World, there was a place, a park, Astro World, literally, that was built. It was built 1968. Now, if you don't know your history, then you don't know why this number is so important. This is very important. I'll show you why it's important. This is how Satan blinded the people and they don't see these important things. This is so interesting. When I dug that up, I was so much in shock. All right? By the way, there was a child that died in the Astro World event too. Koinky Dinky. And remember, there were children sacrificed to Moloch. That's Satan's tendency back then, right? Astro World is supposed to be some kind of kids' park. Okay, but when I looked up uh, 1968, it shocked me on what I discovered about 1968. 1968, for some of you who didn't know, this is all the goodies that happened that you didn't know before. That's when Astro World started the park, okay? All right, if that's, could that be connected to a lot of other satanic things what Satan had intended? Yeah, okay. The Rockefellers, you know when they began their construction on their twin towers? 1968. And you know the Rockefellers, they're tied to a lot of... Uh, Dark elitist stuff, occultic stuff that you know about that. Oh, you want me to show you another coinky dinky? You know what happened that same year, 1968? That was when 911 was created. 911 with twin towers constructed by Rockefeller. What happened at 911 to the twin towers? See, there's, if you, uh, now you might think that I'm stretching it. Okay, I say that, but then when are you going to be open to Satan using numbers for something? What, give me some examples of that. Do you have some examples? Second case is this. Second case is that you have not read Masonic materials or occultic materials. They say they use numbers and they use, uh, they use numbers and symbols to hide a deeper meaning of what they're going to do. That's right. So then tell me what, what is then? By the way... Space Odyssey, that was when it was released too, the movie, 1968. Coronavirus, coined term by Rockefeller, 1968. It's from their uh, foundation, if you look it up. Wow. Didn't you know that? You want me to show you even something wa more wow? We know who's tied to this. Go to Revelation 18. Revelation 18. What does the Bible show which system connects to satanic music with sacrifices, people getting killed? Babylon. It has to be something Roman Catholic. Look at verse, uh, we know Babylon is Roman Catholic at Revelation 18, but look what the Bible says at verse 22. And the voice of harpers and musicians and of pipers and trumpeters shall be heard no more at all in thee. And no craftsman of, so notice right here, the Antichrist in his satanic Babylon, he will have his music played. But notice what accompanies that. Keep reading verse 23. Uh, and the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee. And the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. Verse 24, and in her was found the what? Blood of prophets and of saints and of all that were slain upon the earth. So Babylon will have satanic music while at the same time those humans sacrificed or killed for the devil. So that's Catholic. That's going to be Catholic. It's eventually Catholicism will get involved. You doubt that now, but Revelation 18 if the Catholic Church is Babylon, it has to happen then. Because the Antichrist rules from Babylon, and that's how he'll conduct his worship service. 
We saw that from scriptural evidence. Well, Koinki Dinky, 1968. What was formed that time was the Club of Rome, Rockefeller. 1968. You want more evidence? Uh, if that's not enough to convince you about 1968, I was shocked when I dug up myself. You dig up yourself. All right, you know what I found out? Anton LaVey, wow, yeah. the satanic mass, that record, music coincidentally, satanic mass, like a sacrifice. You know, uh, when he was able to uh, release it to the public, guess what year? 1968. Don't tell me there's no satanic spirit behind all of this. Bigger evidence? Let's even look at a secular perspective. Secular historians, you know one of the most important events that changed all the world was? That you can see globalism rising and all that? 1968. Google it if you don't believe me. That changed our whole timeline. They say that one and 2021, Koinky Dinky where we see a lot of this globalist weird stuff happening, happening, those are the two competitors of the most significant events that change all of history. Why? That's the Vietnam War. You know what that was? Martin Luther King Jr. being shot. That was when JFK got assassinated. And you tie with what? All that globalist elite stuff behind it. It's 1968. There's something going on. 1968. So then, if that's so important, 1968, what does it mean then in Gematria to the occultists? You want to believe it? You know what iron mixed with clay is, right? When those demonic offspring, Daniel 2, start to uh, intermingle with the humans. They start to live with them. That's, that's a strange number to Satan. Let me show you another one. You know what this also means to Satan, to the occult mindset? Jesus is Leviathan. That's what 1968 in Gematria means to them. What does Satan want to be like? I am Christ. That scared me after that. When I looked that up at Gematria. You can look it up online too. Gematria, 1968, what that meant in Hebrew, because that was originally Hebrew. There's something, there's something satanic. That's the conclusion of all this. Yeah, do I believe there's something satanic with what happened at Astro World? Absolutely. Absolutely. When I, look, when I look at the occultic plane, their own territory, when I look at a historical pattern of Satan's behavior, when I look at biblical evidence itself that even condones it, this type of rationale, and when I see Satan always trying to imitate God, yes, yes, I see something satanic behind all of this. Heavenly Father, I pray that tonight's teaching has been uh, eye-opening to the people about what Satan's trying to do. There's no doubt this world is run by him. Uh, let, even giving the benefit of the doubt to Travis Scott and to a lot of people that uh, there were sincere good people. And you know, that's what the devil uses. He uses sincere good people. He can even use sincere good Christians. We've seen that. So I pray that we'll see that this enemy should not be underestimated that he's trying to do something. There's no doubt his working is going on in our world. I pray that is been convincing enough to the people and that they will be able to arm themselves and realize this world belongs to him. So what we're supposed to do is to not be a part of this world and not set our affections on things of this world, and, but to set our affection on things above, to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ and to get away from this uh, contemporary music garbage. There's no such thing as contemporary Christian music, Heavenly Father. It's satanic, Lord. There's no doubt about that. And that's what the devil will use in the future. Help us not to fall prey. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.